So today I'm going to show you how to do a chi-squared test in jump. And I'm going to use the same data that we did in the lecture and when we calculated the chi-squared by hand. And this was the number of, of different um, car makes sold throughout a particular day. And so first we need to enter in the data because I don't have a spreadsheet with the data. So we can go to the new data table button, select that button, and it opens up a empty spreadsheet as if you just opened up a new Excel spreadsheet. So the first column will be the car type. Now Excel, excuse me, jump, when jump does the analyses, the data need to be in a long format, which means it needs to be going down with the data separated by the particular X value here and the Y value here. And this is just because of how jump works. So if we were going to make a table, a really nice, pretty formatted table for a um, publication, we'd probably go in a wide uh, way, right? We'd probably have the different factors going across with the data um, in that one row, but jump needs it to go by columns. So I'm going to first write the different car types. So we had Chevy, we had Ford, and we had Buick. And then I'm going to double click on this next column, excuse me, which will fill in a new column with the dots of empty data. Double click in that cell and type in the frequency. So this are basically the numbers of cars that each type sold. Now, when you're typing in just like in Excel, you can hit enter and it'll bring you to the next um, cell below the previous cell. I'm going to double click on the column heading up here, which will allow me to change um, the column name. So I'm changing it to type of car and, and jump already knows that it's a nominal data type and it's a character, hit okay double click column two, and this is just gonna be number of cars sold. And again, jump knows it's numeric and it knows it's continuous, hit okay. So again, we can check here, it's a red histogram, which means it's a categorical variable, and we have a blue continuous triangle here, that means it's a continuous variable. So now we have our data, but what we need to do is we need to tell jump that this is actually a frequency so that when we do the chi-squared analyses it knows that it needs to calculate the proportions based on these individual datas as a whole and so we calculated chi-squared by hand using the frequencies which were the number of cars so we just compared the number of cars that were sold to the expected number of cars that were sold but jump um, uses proportions to calculate the chi-squared. And so we need to tell it how to calculate the proportions. So what you do first is you highlight the column of the frequencies. You go up to the column field on the taskbar. And then you go to pre-select role frequency. So we're basically telling jump, okay, we're telling jump this is a frequency. Hit OK. And so now we can see that Jump has put a little frequency icon here, which is good. So now we know Jump knows this is frequency. So now what we need to do is we need to create a histogram of the data. Because remember, a chi-squared test is actually a question of differences between distributions. So remember from a previous video, we can make a histogram by either going to analyze di distribution or by selecting the distribution button on the taskbar. So we need to tell jump what we're interested in. And because we already know that numbers of cars is a frequency, what the variable is that we're actually interested in is the type of car number of cars is just how those types of cars are being described. So the type of car is what we want to bring over to the Y columns. Because we told Jump that number of cars is the associated frequency, it knows that that's the data it needs to pull from. So we highlight type of car, we select the Y columns button, and then we select OK. And now we have a frequency of the 
a distribution of the different car types. Now you can see we have the count data that we told um, uh, jump. You can see that it's it's rearranged it alphabetically. And then we have the proportions. So by telling um, jump it's a frequency, it knows it needs to calculate the proportions based on the count out of the total number. So remember the total number was 210 um, number of cars. So now in order to test the chi-squared, we need to test the probabilities. So we'll go up to our red arrow on the type of car, select that, and go down to test probabilities. And you can see the hint tells you it computes a chi-squared test. So we select test probabilities. Now I'm going to make this a little bigger so we can see. Now we need to tell Jump what those hypothetical probabilities or proportions are. So remember, we're just wondering, are the car types being bought at a different proportion based on what we would expect if they were all equally bought? And so when we calculated the number of cars for each group, we just divided the total number of cars, 210, by the three levels, which would give us 70 cars per group. So we can calculate this, the proportion in the same way that we calculated the observed proportions, which was just the number divided by the total. So 70 divided by 210 is one third, which is 0.33. So the hypothetical uh, probabilities for each group is equal because again, we're interested in saying, okay, are they equal in terms of the frequency they're being bought? We leave it as the default, as the hypothes hypothesized values, and then we select done. And it runs the chi-squared for us. Now we are interested in the Pearson's chi-squared, which is this bottom number here. Now remember, we can test our hypotheses by comparing either the, the calculated test statistic, which in this case is the chi-squared statistic, to the critical value that we can pull from a distribution table. This case would be the chi-square distribution table given our alpha of 0.05 and our degrees of freedom of two. The second way we can test the hypothesis is comparing our calculated p-value, which is 0.07 here, to our alpha, which is 0.05. Now remember, if the p-value is less than our alpha, then we reject our null hypothesis if it's greater than our alpha, as it is in the case here, then we fail to reject our null hypothesis. So remember, our null hypothesis is that the proportions are equal to each other. So because our p-value is 0 0.07 and it's greater than 0 0.05, we fail to reject our hypothesis, and we can state that there is no difference between the proportion of cars that are bought for each of those types compared to what we'd expect if they were bought equally.